I continue to get asked about the case Damic, so let me explain. Here we see many European countries and they're all pretty much the same. Community immunity and the passing of the susceptible, like all viruses in history, has caused the death rate to come right down. Back here there was an epidemic with high death rates, sadly, of susceptible people. And now there is no epidemic by any reasonable definition because the death rates and ICU are right down. Here's Sweden intensive care loading, they only reached around 60% of capacity and that was in the epidemic. But now there's no epidemic and there's only 32 ICU beds in the whole of Sweden, 10.5 million people. And they had no lockdown, no masks, and they're kind of just completely back to normal here. But if you kept testing with PCR tests, as is happening all around Europe, you'd get a case-demic and you could create a panic. So for PCR testing insights, you can go to CEBM PCR, searching in Google, and you get this excellent article from the Center of Evidence-Based Medicine. And the PCR is picking up people who are asymptomatic with no real problem. It's picking up people who had recovered from COVID a month or two ago. It's finding viral fragments. So the PCR test at this stage is driving hysteria inappropriately. I'll just show you a few countries and finish with that. Here's Spain. So we've recently in the last month or two got hyper testing and lots of so-called cases, positive PCRs, but the deaths are gone. In fact, they disappeared pretty much in May. Belgium, same story, case demic out here with positive PCRs, but no deaths or ICU ended in May. France, bit of a case demic here, but the deaths are gone and the impacts. And Netherlands, we got a big case demic going on with lots of testing, but you'll see months have gone by with no deaths. So there is no following death or ICU problem. That's a case demic. What is going on? Well, I'll help explain what's going on, I would say. So this paper here was fascinating, a study done on around 50,000 people, and they tracked over nine years all the respiratory infections. And they also tested for all the virus variants that will be seen. And here's the output. And basically, we're not going to look at all the viruses, but we're going to focus in on uh, coronavirus, which is the light green. And I'm going to highlight the winters. And in the winter, there's 15 to 20 percent prevalence of coronavirus. But you also will see five, three, seven percent uh, prevalence in the summer months as well. So you will always find viruses and virus fragments when you go looking. That's the point. This is very interesting from 2009 and the swine flu. So Ragnar lives on Twitter, uh, pulled all this out from official documentation, government documentation. So we see here the tracking in 2008 into 2009 flu season and you know there would have been mortality there for sure. But then something fascinating happened. Uh, new PCR type rapid testing flu chip came in and it was focused on looking at the swine flu. That was the flavor of the month back then. So what happened was in the summer there were really almost no deaths but there was a huge freak out, a case demic. And you can see here in the orange that's the H1N1 and there was an enormous panic because all these cases were being seen mounting and mounting, but they were primarily driven by, of course, PCR type testing. And then into the fall, there was a lot of H1N1 being seen and huge amounts of test. And again, people were panicking, but no one really died or at least tiny numbers. Uh, and then it began to fade out and they just gave up testing. I think the kind of panic faded and that was it. But at the time, there were a lot of articles in mainstream media, you know, where there was clearly a huge amount of concern. And many of you may have remembered this period of swine flu where everyone was really, really worried. Lots of articles, epidemics, global cases rise. And we had mass producers scrambling. Yeah. And we worldwide, we had shortage of surgical masks. So this should seem familiar. Now, coronavirus in March, April, May of this year in Europe and in northern US and other regions like that caused a lot of impacts, you know, like some really bad previous 
uh, flu seasons in the past 20 or 30 years. But the reality is now we are more in a case demic, as I've described. So just to show England for the swine flu, similar story, we see here the seasonal rise in mortality in the kind of yellow colored curve. And every winter we get a mortality spike. And this is normal and it's been like that forever. And down here we see test results. And of course you're seeing more positive tests in each winter season for flu. But what's this spike here? Well, this huge spike is like I showed you in the US a moment ago. This was the new hyper testing of H1N1 swine flu and it was in the summer. So you'll notice there's a huge amount of cases seen and a lot of panic, but you'll notice at the same time it's the lowest mortality rate in decades because it's the summer uh, of 2010. So this is a classic case demic again demonstrated here. So we must always look at the mortality and intensive care loading to tell if we've got a major issue. You can't use PCR testing because in the rise of an epidemic, it may tell you useful things. But when an epidemic passes, it tends to just fuel a case demic. So this article is very revealing. It's the swine flu panic of 2009 in Spiegel newspaper, mainstream newspaper. The link is there. Or you can Google Spiegel swine flu. Those words will get you the article. And it describes what really happened in that whole era. Uh, they don't use the word case-demic, but you will find that the word resonates with what's in this article. So very, very interesting. So I'm going to finish with just Again, reinforcing what I said, here's Spain daily cases right up to August 6th. We got a case demic going on here. But when you correct for actual mortality, real impacts, case fatality rate adjusted, you see that almost nothing is happening, uh, as I said. And another view of it here, you've got Spain. This is from the government. And we can see the epidemic here obviously had, sadly, you know, very big impact in deaths, like a, like a very bad flu season, essentially. And then we see the impact falling right off to around coming into June, you know, we're down to tiny levels. Um, and you can see down at the end here, you know, that this is obviously not an epidemic in terms of impact terms. It would never even be noticed uh, if not coming out of the prior epidemic. And if you keep testing out here, as I've said, you create a case demic. So in the winter, there will be more susceptible people built up. You know, there will be some impacts for sure, though many of the susceptible will have sadly passed this year already in March and April. Um, but in any case, now you understand case demics. Thanks for listening, guys. And just a reminder that I do need support to continue putting together all of this content. And at patreon.com forward slash Ivor Cummins or for PayPal at tinyurl.com forward slash Ivor Cummins, where you can do a one off or a monthly support. So I'd really appreciate that, guys, and keep me getting the science out there and countering perhaps the more biased corporate type science. Thank you.